Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Jason back at it again with another Geography Now video. This time guys, we're back in Europe. Speaking of Europe, the AP exam uh, I talked about, I think in my last video. Uh, I apologize for the quality on that video. Uh, I'm disappointed with how I, it ended. Uh, I hate how I realized it just a few hours ago when I came back from school. But uh, I apologize for the quality. I apologize how I lagged so many times. But uh, well, oh well. But uh, speaking of uh, back to what I was talking about, uh, AP Euro. I have my period one exam. Uh, it could go either ways to be honest. The LEQ, the long essay question, that I for sure didn't do well on. Uh, I was kind of going on a speedy rush because you know. I didn't have that much time, and that would t the LEQs would take me about like an, an hour, <laughs> not an hour, but more thirty minutes. So, yeah, I'm a slow writer, right? So, uh, it it really depends on the multiple choice with stimulus, uh, how I did on those. I hopefully I did well. I think I did well. I don't know. So we'll have to see uh so speaking of ap european history we have geography now so anyways what i know about switzerland is that uh their football team they beat france to end the round of 16 to their euros this summer uh for history for ap i remember the swiggly reformation uh right now we're in period one we're learning about reformation renaissance and uh world exploration switzerland uh, they gained independence from the Peace of Augsburg, or no, the Peace of Westphalia. Uh, the Peace of Augsburg was in the Holy Roman Empire, where German princes could choose whatever religion, but that's beside the point. Uh, and I also know the Swiss Reformation, you know, Swigli and all that stuff. So, anyways, let's just get started with the video. I've been talking way too much. So, anyways, let's just get started with this video in 3, 2, 1. All right, we have now reached Switzerland. And this now, is also the first time that this geography now is not in Wednesday. This was uploaded on Thursday, which I kind of hate it because, you know, essentially European final. And now shit goes down. They have a bunch of bunkers they can hide in in case of nuclear war happens. But we'll get into that later. In the meantime, here is the intro song. Oh, that actually was what? Look at that, guys. Nostalgia, nostalgia. Hey, I'm your host, Barb. By the way, guys, yes. Geographynow.com. Not selling out. I know, I know. In any case, Switzerland, the crossroads of the Germanic and Latin world. Known as That's the weird. Confederation Helvetica, despite not actually being a confederation. Named after the Helveti tribe, which were actually Celtic. Hmm, we should hang out sometime. Whoa. That were mostly wiped out and driven away by the Latins and Germanic peoples. Oh. Yeah, Romans. Okay. But anywho, hmm. so I actually promised I don't think Romans were Latin. Herman that he I be think in this I episode with me. And I wanted to fly him out here to Los Angeles to co host. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this episode, the U.S. had restrictions on Europeans entering our country, and the actual date of acceptance for Europeans to enter would take way too long so i decided if i can't fly him out here why don't i just fly out there and make a makeshift geography now studio set and have him in the episode here i go oh i didn't even realize this oh made it and guys say hi to mr herman hello nice to meet you uh, Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah. again i'm super short so i gotta step a box. What does it mean to you, Herman, to be uh, Swiss? Yes, of course, the whole cheese and chocolate thing. No, you really didn't have to say that, because now, now I just feel bad. In this nice country, which is just uh, safe, stable, and it has been like this for a long time. By the way, guys, uh, this is the guy that... Shout out to Young Boys as well, the football uh, club. I forgot to say that in the intro, but shout out to them. Sure. Alright, and with that, let's move on. Let's Jordan find P. Fuck and some other guys. That's the only guys I know. So Switzerland Let is kind go, of a unique place go. in Europe, mostly because of the way how it yeah. was born. You see, most countries had a king, but Switzerland didn't, which is just a bunch of annoyed mountain folk who didn't want to align with any king and became independent. Now, there's a lot of disagreement on exactly how Switzerland Sicilia. was born. Some people say maybe it was the medieval times. Some people say it was the more modern Napoleonic Wars. So technically, the earliest form of Switzerland was after the Rütlischwur. Uri Schwyz and Unterwalden agreed to have an alliance. It was basically like, hey, Schwyz! How's it going? Hey man, yes. this army just came in and attacked me for no reason. Oh, no way, me too. Are we talking about the armies coming through without our permission?
competition? Yes! Oh, oh my god, so, so annoying. annoying. <gasps> you know what we should do? We should form a, um... A confederation. A confederation. A yeah. confederation. Let's do it. Like, let's form a confederation. Wow. Together? Then later it was like, hey, can, can we join, please? Can I join There's too? Like, just like... I don't speak the language, but we'd like Bribery. to... This gives me an idea, maybe I should expand. The point is, Switzerland started to grow. And today you have the Switzerland... You Wasn't it part of the Holy Roman Empire AP first, though? Let's I don't know. Now, shall we? First of all, yeah, I'm going to be talking about AP stuff all the time, bro. In Europe, surrounded by five countries. I blame it on my AP teacher, bro. The country is a federal republic made up of 26 cantons, each with their own unique flag and coat of arms. However, keep in mind, six of these cantons are considered traditional half cantons, which means they are grouped into three pairs that share a councillor in their government. In order to maintain a somewhat decentralized government system that keeps cantons happy, technically Switzerland has no official capital, as stated by their constitution, but Bern is considered the de facto capital Bern. as it holds the House of Parliament that's and other federal I, authorities. That's the what people get city, though, would be Zurich, when they talk in smack. The eastern part of the country. It also hosts the largest and busiest airport, Zurich that's International. And from there, the next largest cities are Geneva and Basel, which also carry respectively the second and third busiest airports as well. In fact, Euro about 75% of the population actually lives in the North Swiss Plateau, even though it only makes up about 30% of the land surface. Speaking of which, the only ambiguous dispute dispute they have is with Germany and Austria over the Bodensee or Lake Constance. The three countries have never formally Ooh, established like, borders and they kind of just don't say anything. In any case, Switzerland also has some other unique border anomalies. For one, by Schaffhausen, Switzerland tried to grab as much land as they could north of the Rhine River, leaving a unique layout of territory grabs that jut into Germany and it even leaves one exclave of Germany entirely within Switzerland, Bussingen am Hochrhein. Head down south to the Ticino Canton and you have the Campione d'Italia, which is basically one big casino resort it is an exclave of Italy completely engulfed the rivalry Switzerland, between about a half mile or less than one Juve kilometer and over a hill Juve? away from Italy finally if you go up to Basel you have some very weird skinny land salients that jut into France for no logical reason like this one by the town of Dritti which at its narrowest choke point is less than 230 feet or 70 meters wide transport in uh, Switzerland cares, is top notch though well I don't have highways this tunnels and train of networks of connect every forest. region of Switzerland the biggest and most proud engineering project that the country has ever gone through though would probably be the Gotthard base tunnel. It is the longest rail tunnel and deepest traffic tunnel in the world, effectively cutting through the Alps, connecting the canton of Uri with Ticino. This tunnel has heavily bolstered the efficiency of Switzerland's freight and passenger transport, as about 11,000 people and about 70,000 tons of cargo are able to swiftly pass by daily. Fun fact, because of Herman, me and my mom actually got to go see Liechtenstein. He drove us all the way from Zurich, all the way through Liechtenstein in Austria, and we ended up in Lindau, Germany, where we met the worst waiter ever at a casino restaurant. I remember this guy was horrible. <laughs> in Switzerland, public transport is really good. You can get almost anywhere by train. That's the Jungfrau Jochbahn, which brings you above 3,500 meters. But that's kind of like more of a touristy thing. Oh. Yeah, that's a tour. I've never been. I want to ice skate. Trains, you that's the same thing I had to go. Ones, and right? yeah, don't even get me started. The trams from Zurich are going oh, bro. It's almost that. It's almost winter, bro. <laughs> The interesting I want to go back to summer, bro. Some places that are actually outside of modern I hate the winter. I hate the cold. Or the only the good thing about winter is Christmas. Bullhaus, which lies in today's France. Rottweil in Germany. Valtellina and Bormio, which today lie in Italy. Even though the Austrian state of Vorarlberg once voted to become part of Switzerland in World War One, we decided to better not take them in. You rejected them. Now, another thing about Switzerland yeah, you have to understand is that neutral. they kind of have like two imaginary lines based off of the cultural regions. You can explain. What are they, Herman? Uh, there's the Röstigraben, separating the French-speaking part of Switzerland from the German. And then there's the Polentagraben, which is between the German part and the South, which speaks Italian. Basically, one side drinks beer, the other wine. Due to their history of constantly being invaded or outside forces threatening or just generally bothering them, the Swiss have developed a culture of, let's just kind of call it, heavy defensive caution. We are neutral, but we still uh, are prepared to defend ourselves to make it as accessible they, like, as possible for um, anybody to attack us. You know, I don't say anything because I'm going to sound like a nerd. Loaded with copious amounts of bunkers everywhere. Like, it's actually a law all living units have to have. During World War II, yeah. didn't they, like, blow yeah. their, like, borders if you go hiking, so then them, them, them the German There's guys no not come and invade them. Built, I know what they call but they you know, protect the entire population plus I want money. More, right? Money. I, mean, question is I want long. my videos to be case, Switzerland has so many notable cool sites to see and visit. We actually filmed this part before I could audition anybody to do it, so uh, I'll just uh, fill this in with a voice dubbed voiceover. Here's 
Alex. Hey guys, I'm Alex. I'm from Geneva, Switzerland, although I'm currently in Mexico. Here's a few things you should absolutely Mexico. check out if you haven't oh, made it. I want to go back to where I was. I want to go back to Pierre, Central uh, America. Edition, which is home that was amazing, bro. Anderson, hydro gliding, castles, check it out was like yesterday where I just Chilon, went there in April. Uh, Valle and Tubion, uh, Chateau de Gruyere, uh, Bunhausen, which is basically our capital. Check out the bear park. Uh, Kinderfressenbrunnen statue. Lauterbrunnen is My man has 70 waterfalls. Uh, the Lake Lucerne has a line on it and the Chapel Bridge. With, uh, yeah, 347 no ski pauses. roads covering a distance of 4.5 I would love this ski, bro. So Matt, I would love this ski, bro. Uh, my personal favorite I'm a wobbly guy, all right? I am literally spaghetti. Gases, uh, like, I, 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 I shake. Lugano, down in the south That's why when I was riding my LEQ, I was... Of museums and amusement parks. Like, I was with me. Check out uh, Aqua Park, Conyland, Swiss Vapor Park, and the Geiger. No, man, I want to go back to a wall, bro. And if you're looking Take me back, bro. Rush, check out the like, just stop the count. As well as the oh, I've seen, I've seen the slides. I've seen that slide. Seen that slide. Well. But, yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Alex. You're always going underground for whatever reason. Yeah, if you have a mountain in between two places, what are you going to do? Which is actually the perfect transition into the next segment. The... <laughs> Now, of course, you cannot talk about Switzerland without talking about the mountains. That was a good transition. Right. I'll give you that. I'll Literally, give you the that. moment you say Switzerland, when I tried doing the transition in the beginning of the video, it kind of sucked because I just yeah, even the iconic about Matterhorn probably comes up, although twelve people a year usually die on it. But yeah, it's still very beautiful. It's a challenge. <laughs> so let's go to the map and break down Switzerland's land makeup. Now, despite Switzerland being famous for the Alps and being the most mountainous country in Europe, the actual Alps only make up about sixty percent of the country. The remainder of the country is made up of two other geographic zones the swiss or central plateau which is the lowest part of the country and where most of the agriculture and livestock grazing is concentrated and the jura mountains in the northwest on the border with france of course in the alps you can find shocker the tallest peak Dufourspitze, just on the border with italy no the famous incredibly difficult to climb matterhorn just a few miles away is not the tallest peak it just looks really cool that's all just to skip away you find really the alec cool. glacier the largest Thank glacier you. in that the alps very and it is a unesco heritage site from the ice melt Sorry, I shouldn't be saying anything because, like I said, with the rivers that feed Switzerland, including the longest river, the Rhine, just which shares borders with its kind of cliche. However, the mind. longest river fully is nah, Switzerland, I'm not pretty sure I zero on that. Um, or R river. Mm, I didn't do good, bro. I didn't do good. I didn't do good. Lakes of Switzerland, Stimulus, bro. Carry me. Also, the short answer questions, too. But I didn't finish the last one. Oh my god, guys, it's Geneva. Where John Kelly. Calvin. Confused with Neuchâtel in Normandy, France, which is where the soft cheese comes from. Yeah, and those highlights don't even cover a fraction of all the cool nature all right, stuff that was... in Switzerland. You, you saw that pause, right? No. Nah. Is it like fresh enough for you to drink from, or no? You could Just maybe, but pause. guy might have peed in it five minutes ago. Right? Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, Switzerland sure is beautiful, but yeah, when I'm it comes to natural bro. resources, we're actually not so rich. We don't really have any. Much of our economy is actually based on industry and services. To explain a little bit more about the economy Switch and the chocolate. output, here's Noah to explain. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. We all know high-end oh. things like luxury Swiss Actually, watches and Swiss knives are made in no, Switzerland, no, no. which are, by the way, say, oh, here she the Europe. dollar okay. industry. By the way, if you're looking for a backpack, Swiss gear is amazing. I've had one of those backpacks for Wait, it's actually a... Great. No, I thought they were Bad joking, bro. But the one industry that everyone is actually takes a Swiss... focus oh, on, even though it only makes thank you for making luggages and making my life easier. System. Home to two Especially world name companies, point. UBS and Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse being founded by Alfred Escher. Look him up. The appeal is that Swiss banks offer an insane amount of privacy and confidentiality. To explain more about the bank situation, here's Swiss geography Simon. Good to meet you, man. Hello, I am uh, Simon, and I'm actually from Switzerland. What part of Switzerland? Bodensee. Whoa! See, back in 1713, uh, Switzerland's great council decided 1713. they would outdoor the uh, financial resources like I said, I got of uh, Europe's financial elites. Uh, actually, it's a good of bribery, thing to talk about AP Euro, because this is a European country. Was, uh, made criminal to I'm pretty sure the next lesson, we, well, okay, so we finished as as World Exploration, I think uh, our next lesson is abolism. Sometimes they haven't uh, seen the absolute, which means abu that they absolutism, absolutism, absolutism. Yep, absolute warning. Not, I'm not right really, because that sounds boring. But yeah. very close to scientific revolution. So, 
beautiful banks mm. such as the 1996 Holocaust victim class action lawsuit, which claimed that Swiss banks knowingly concealed assets illegally acquired by the Nazis. Then again in 2009, uh, the US uh, strong arm Switzerland into, you know, uh, disclosing uh, wealthy assets from 50,000 Americans. It worked, but now, you know, Swiss banks don't accept any Free American, Island dream. even Swiss people who moved to America or who mm. make a vacation. Those uh, low join open an account, just contact me on Instagram and it will be totally confidential. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. I'll Adieu just go quick. Thanks, quick, Simon. Quick. Yeah. With great banks comes great liabilities. But of course, Switzerland is more than just banks. They have thriving pharmaceutical tech and tourism sectors. The palette is getting dry. Is that a Swiss bottle too? Oh, no. Nah. Come on, bro. They take the agriculture industry very seriously. I need a drink too. Yeah, the ice. I'm, of farms. I'm, I mean, how can you say I'm no thirsty. To I need a Swiss cold house. drink. I, I, don't, I don't drink coffee. So. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink it. Hey guys, uh, Caleb's actually busy, he couldn't do the segment, but uh, we got Ian, so uh, you're going to be Gary Harlow today. We're probably going to mess it up, but I don't care. Yay. Yeah. I'm going to screw it up for sure. Switzerland, being the alpine nation it is, provides quite the habitat for all kinds of strange species. Come on, the country Jesus. has 18 official nature parks. Now, in these mountains, you have quite a many of mountain-adapted undulates. Much noted are the ibex and the chamois. Thanks to their two-toed hooves, these little guys latch on to the narrowest of walls. And this makes you think, are they brave or are they just stupid? I ask myself that a lot. Unfortunately, most of the predators, like the gray wolves same and the Eurasian same. lynx, are same. incredibly rare. Brown bears were actually hunted to extinction in 1904. Now, one species of predator that does thrive in Switzerland is the European asp. It's a viper. But it's well I didn't even know. Bro, you're a buzz. Now, the bite Sorry, is extremely bro. painful. Now, unlike most countries, like Switzerland no, doesn't have though. a national animal. But if you ask around, you might find out that the unofficial Swiss animal is the iconic Swiss cow. Even though Swiss they're cow. not naturally from these here mountains. All right, well, that's it for me, Ooh, fellas. Yeah. Is I'm sorry, Hannah. I'm sorry. Thanks, Ian. Uh, anyway, we've discussed much of the industry, economy, and physical makeup. That means there's only one more part left. Food! Now, I love doing this part, but I will gracefully step down and let natural Swiss geography take over. Hello, we are Mara hey. and Parrots, and today we are going to talk about Swiss food. We That's have to talk about Look cheese, at the of course. Thousands of varieties of Looks them. Like probably also known as popular I dishes. Like about Mundi fall. and Brochne. A Röschli, which is like a Yellow, hash brown, apple the beautiful sky, the little cool. In the mountains and, and hills, the look at that, bro. That's cool, that's cool. But I don't, I don't live there. And of course, uh, chocolate. Yeah, although we don't have cocoa trees here. <laughs> we also invented absinthe. Which is a super strong alcohol and give you hallucinations. Then there is also another soft drink uh, called Rivella. And uh, finally, in every Swiss kitchen, mochi and automot. And like a mini automot, uh, seriously. In a Swiss person's hiking backpack. That's it. <laughs> Man, I gotta, I gotta try some of those desserts you mentioned. All right, Barb's back to you. Thank you, Noah. Have they even also mentioned Swiss, Swiss chocolate? Swiss so expensive. Swiss chocolate. Actually, like to go shopping in other countries just because it's cheaper. There are Bomb. some laws what you can Bomb. bring back, like uh, one kilogram of meat, right five now. liters of wine. Well, I want any. I want everything right now. One kilogram of butter. They actually check at the border when you drive through. Yes. But I mean, you guys do have good stuff. I mean, you, you're well known for your cheese and chocolate. We put it on everything. You bake something in the oven, put some cheese on it. You're having sushi, why not put some rocklet? Yeah, food always brings people together. Except for that one time in Lindau with that f***ing waiter, I swear. Seriously, dude, four years later and you're still traumatized. Yes, I'm still pissed off. Anyway, let's move on. Switzerland, as we already explained, has a lot of cantons. Wow. And there's actually kind of a uh, word you guys have in Switzerland. Explain, Herman. Look at all those I lines that do what this, it and, and a lot of soccer and teams, logos. Which we conquered. Despite the fact that each of the region kind of has their own Canton cultural difference, at the end of the day, they are all Swiss. Here's how you break down the populace. First of all, the country has about 8.5 million people and often ranks in the top three global competitive markets and human development index scores on Earth. Ethnically speaking, things get a little complicated because Swiss censuses only take in data from factors like citizenship and place of birth. So the specific details can be a little vague, but in the broadest sense, it will say that about 75% of the country are Swiss nationals and the remaining 25% are resident foreigners, one of the highest proportions in the developed world. From here, things get a 
little overlappy because within both groups everything breaks down linguistically as well often switzerland will refer to their linguistic groups for data rather than ethnic in which case about 63 percent of the country are primarily german speaking swiss 23 percent are primarily french speaking and somewhere around eight to nine percent are primarily italian speaking yeah, finally that, less than one percent are romance speaking keep in mind like, this data can apply to anyone from anywhere that claims these but languages care, as primaries regardless I'll, I'll of their ethnic tomorrow. background what we do know though is that of the 25 percent foreign residents about 64 percent of them are from the eu or efta countries the largest being italians followed by germans and portuguese and french there's a sizable kosovar albanian community and of the asian community sri lankans mostly of tamil descent make up the largest demographic the swiss franc is our currency and we drive on the right side of the road and you guys use the j plug outlet which i hate because there's like an inward diamond shaped divot and my c plug adapters don't fit why do you you guys are trying to do everything to be different from the rest of europe it's so weird well sometimes you introduce a standard before the rest of europe and then it's too late in switzerland the dishwashers used to be 65 centimeters and then europe introduced a new standard of 60 centimeters but the problem is it costs more to manufacture in a special size so our dishwashers cost three times as much no, Yay! Bro, no, anyway no, no. switzerland he's, he's has going four official switzerland, languages man. swiss german no, i'm just French, saying bro you got Italian, a lot more and than... romance even though less than one percent of the country speaks it it's still an official language it's actually pretty closely related to vulgar latin which was spoken in the roman empire and uh it's also a cousin of romanian so most of us know three languages somehow what is the difference between swiss german and hochdeutsch spoken in germany so swiss german is a, a very strong dialect we have uh, dropped for example the simple past tense and uh, the germans don't really understand us don't even get started with french swiss as well although i do like how they use the nonons and uh huitons and uh septons cat bond and cat bond like, uh, and don't even get started with ticino italian in, in fact you know what Mat matteo can explain it here you go this guy can explain so ticino swiss sounds very much like uh, northern uh, lombardy you can't tell if it's a swiss or not but just by the pronunciation but the swiss have some specific word that give them up for example they say natal instead of mobile phone or they say lift instead of ascensore for saying lift except for this it's just usual northern italian uh, speech anyway regardless of the linguistic background they are not french swiss or german swiss or italian they're all just Swiss. For what's worth though, there's so much backstory with Switzerland. For example, the Habsburg family, which ruled Habsburgs. the Austrian Hungarian Empire for centuries, was from Habsburg in Argyll, Switzerland. But they lost with their knights against the Swiss peasants in the Battle of Morgarten. See, this is kind of the interesting contrast to the contrast otherwise style, neutral, man. peaceful image of Switzerland comes in. The brutal fighting skill of the Swiss was so well renowned throughout Europe that it actually kind of became like their biggest export. All the rulers in Europe uh, got Swiss mercenaries and in the end it might be a French king fighting an Italian army and in the end it's Swiss fighting Swiss <laughs> That's so yeah. weird. and then they actually decided to stop having offensive war and introduce this neutrality nonetheless you know their neutrality has always been kind of pressured throughout the years and it's been kind of pushed uh, explain a little bit more Herman in neutrality you also have to treat both sides of the war similar for example you could not trade with any of them but we didn't do that because we didn't want to get invaded by Germany so we traded with Germany we traded some with the Allies in the historic context of being surrounded by the Axis powers well you had to to stay neutral yeah. you had to do what you had to do how do you deal with all this pressure trying to be neutral when the whole world is not neutral and you're surrounded by everybody it's a tough it question but for what it's worth switzerland has known that neutrality has always kind of come at a cost and this is one of the reasons why switzerland is a conscription country you go to military after you're 19 once for half a year and then every year a couple of weeks three or four until you're 30 or 31. there's a disclaimer though there are some exceptions the swiss military has some quotas of how many people they want if you have some health issues you don't have to go to the military but you will be paying three percent of your salary to the army and if you have ethical reasons not to go you can also apply. fill out a form apply to not go to the military but you will have to take one and a half times as much time in something called civil service maybe yeah. where you do some some projects for the good of the country so at the end of the day somehow you have to serve switzerland yeah and after yeah. military service you well, can take the gun home technically switzerland has one of the highest gun ownership populations in the world this all kind of plays into their unique system of government I was gonna say, it's often said that switzerland I'd is in an switzerland. eternal you know election campaign those guys are more loyal than four me. times yeah. a year and we Tell also me. vote uh, regional mm -hmm. for people to get into the national council so it's kind of like switzerland focuses more on policies rather than politicians would you say a little bit of both a little bit of both but it's like you're very involved in everything yes. 
you're involved and if you don't like something there will be a referendum but in switzerland it's relatively easy yeah some cantons uh, have different voting systems like uh, voting publicly by raising hands or some weird family sort Just the head of state of switzerland actually though the whole is classroom the council and one of them is the president but it doesn't really matter because it changes every year and he's just one among equals every fun year. fact switzerland can actually no, deny citizenship to anybody who sarcastic. wants to apply for it in fact in 2010 there was one lady who was denied because her neighbors said she was annoying there's a lot of those stories like somebody <laughs> not knowing where the baker is in the village because she shops in a big store no passport for you in regards to religion like most countries in europe most of the people will uh, at least culturally yeah. identify with christianity and in switzerland the case is mostly with catholicism or protestantism it used to be very important my grandma told me uh, her parents would not have accepted her bringing home a catholic but nowadays uh, we don't really care anymore now of course this is See, one this source is that's played a role in many of the regional differences throughout switzerland so they also kind of have like a healthy level to more of political regional competition mm -hmm. and with that let's move on to the sports part with art so Sports in Switzerland go hand in hand, even well, on the sports. corporate side. In fact, you can talk about the Euros. Many European and international well, sports teams have their headquarters in Switzerland. Domestically, though, Switzerland has some sports that they actually invented, such as Schwingen, which is played in sawdust, and the contenders wear burlap shorts. There's also Hornacer. It's a team sport. It's kind of like a mix between golf and baseball. In any case, when you live in a country with big teaching. snowy mountains, you're going to get an emphasis on this is i know a total shocker ice, on winter yep. sports skiing, skiing and mountaineering are pretty much taught from adolescence switzerland ice. also I was invented say ice competitive skating. sledding they invented the first bobsled and bobsled track in st moritz switzerland has done pretty well considering their size in both the summer and winter olympics alpine skiing being their strongest event with 22 gold medals on another note auto racing was actually banned in switzerland they had a huge crash in 1955 that stopped it all but but the government made a little loophole exception for electric racing. And electric. finally, we cannot end this segment without mentioning the most popular athlete. I know him, Roger Federer. He's part of the big three, 20 Grand big Slam singles title tennis. winner, 103 ATP singles ATP. title, two-time Olympic Biology. medalist. He has streets named after him, coins with his face. He's a model for Rolex and numerous oh, brands. Man, There's only, a lot of babies out there I named after him, for sure. So I once got a trophy for potato sack racing well, and it was, uh, it was oh no if you're if you're big in europe you probably know how to end my segment so, so um <laughs> Thank you, Art. Yeah, the Swiss people have shown that even though they're a small country, they still can pack a punch with a competitive side. And we have this thing called Kantonligeist, where each canton really has their own rules and does their own thing. To explain a little bit more about the culture and how things kind of go out in that way for Switzerland, here's Random Hannah with culture stuff. Hi guys, I'm back. And remember, you can get a Random Hannah shirt at geographynow.com. Is this pre-recorded? It doesn't look pre-recorded because the lighting is... It's That's the same as it down to the other deal. Canton having its so I'm assuming there are they actually take some of these members to Europe. Some that you guys told us. Our gals me, are also having bad drivers. Valet has the most incomprehensible accent, while Graubünden has the most beautiful one. Glaus doesn't exist. Zurich Poor has a superiority boy. complex, and Geneva is just the French version of Zurich. Appenzell is known for hippies and alternative medicine. Funny enough, Inner Appenzell didn't give women the right to vote until 1991, and the country as Bro. a whole until 1971. In fact, Bro, what are you guys so living in? Interesting 19th century? Jesus, or the 20th you're century? Not to make I would say more on 20th century. You're not allowed to cut your grass, hang your laundry, or do century. noisy chores no. on Sunday. The Swiss really mm. seem to value their no. silence. The Swiss are known for the many discoveries and inventions century. as well, such as cellophane and aluminum foil. Velcro, aluminum. The vegetable peel Chemistry. By the way, acid and DNA, and they were it's not going well, guys, but notable contemporary I'm, doing, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting there. We'll we'll get from a C to a that's and the most famous one worldwide, Heidi. They are notable for the visual arts in every field. You can find it in everything like Basel, with its 13th century Romanesque architecture, to the early 20th century Dada movement, Dada. even Helvetica font, and its variants originated in Switzerland. It's one of the preferred fonts that we use on Geography Now. Whoa. Speaking of the art, one way to learn about Switzerland is through its Barbs, why didn't you tell? learn more about Switzerland film, follow my channel, Filmography Now. In any case, each day 126 on that screen, Geography Now to make up. You have now. everything from the Bossler no. Fox Map, where people I'll be in the Bossler dress up in masks and throw confetti. I have a B and AP. 12 years in the town 
of Interlaken, where men compete to bring massive boulders. There's too many festivals, we can't go through them all. Partially because we have to move on, which means you know what's coming next. The Florida Man himself, Steve. We need another Florida man. campaign. Well, I wouldn't say he's... Okay, never mind. Never mind. Here, so today I, decided I was going to say, he really isn't the definition of a Florida man, but... The, the way, hair, guys, the loudness, Look at that design. the way he's dressing out right now. Okay, yeah, so that's you guys think a Florida man right there. And all that stuff. You probably think of, you know, yodeling, cowbells. Yodeling. That's a good start, but let's go a little further. Many experts will agree that European alpine yodeling had its roots in Switzerland dating back to the early 1500s. The technique was used by herdsmen trying to call their livestock or communicating far distances between villages in the mountains. Many will say that the traditional national dance music of Switzerland, though, is lander. It uses a 3-4 time signature, quarter note, dead oh, every no, single beat. Mm, the style was actually adopted by many classical composers like Beethoven, uh, Schubert. Uh, they kind of just, you know, took it and ran with it. Okay, now let's fast forward a couple yeah. hundred years. They actually hosted and won the very first Eurovision Song yeah, Contest. Yeah, Eurovision. Back. 30 years later, they would I don't know Eurovision, again, but, but Celine Dion, everyone seems to like it. And, and for to some reason, talk Tina about Turner is a citizen. <laughs> that has nothing to do with banks and money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there are tons of music festivals like street parade festivals, the Montreux Jazz festival which have had such artists as Pat Metheny, Steve Morse fan. I hope to go there at some point. Goal of mine. There's even a statue of Freddie Mercury as Queen recorded many of their top hits in a studio over there. All right, we don't have time to talk about the entire evolution of the 20th century and the 21st century of Swiss musicians and stuff like that. No, but we got However, time. what I will say is that if you like heavy metal bands, you should check out Kill the Frost, which is a great metal band. I hope you enjoyed my segment today. Stay Keith, everybody. Thank you, Keith. Stay so Keith, something important everyone. about Swiss and is how they interact with the rest of the world. Which brings us to the last segment, the friend zone. Oh! We have managed to actually dodge a bullet and stay neutral throughout the last century, which was a quite difficult thing to achieve. I mean, they're so neutral that even North Korea joined the UN before them. Although you guys did host the European... No, we'll host anything Wait, they in diplomacy. But North hosting. Korea joined the UN? How did I not know Here's this, bro? Their diplomacy game. In respect to their constitution and overall global reputation, Yo, Switzerland's Switzerland, foreign policy bro. is to traditionally avoid alliances and work for humanitarian efforts that strive for world peace and prosperity. This is partially why they host more international organizations than any other country in the world, most heavily concentrated in Geneva. Nonetheless, with their intense history and Geneva. backgrounds, there are Shout some countries Geneva that Switzerland has to admit uh, they have Calvin. quite a closer link to, uh, if at the, the very Calvin least, Schoolman. culturally. Uh, no one likes to make fun of Germans more than the Swiss, but in reality, these Luther, two are so heavily Luther tied in, especially with the Baden-Württemberg state that borders Switzerland. Hey, wow, the area John around Calvin the town of Rottweil was part of the old Swiss confederacy so that was lost during the Napoleonic Wars, and today the town has an agreement of friendship with Switzerland. Overall, South Swabian Germans and German-speaking Swiss generally understand and get each other way better than, say, a Berlin or German. In that, that regard, England. Austria has traditionally been no, one of the biggest rivals in things like know. sports and outclassing each know other know. with things like Freelance classical things music, things. architecture, and general welfare. So they both admire the each other's thing. systems of operation, and many Swiss will say that Austrians probably get them way better than the Germans. Otherwise, France pretty much has the oldest diplomatic exchange when they signed the Treaty of Perpetual Peace in 1516, and the first Swiss ambassador abroad was hosted in Paris in 1798. Today, France too. hosts more Swiss people in oh, diaspora than any other country in the world at nearly a quarter million and they appreciate each other's shall we say bougie standards on the other hand italians mostly lombards have been rapidly moving into switzerland mostly in the ticino canton and are really taking advantage of that italian speaking official status the vatican city to this day still hires swiss guards to stand at the palace a tradition that has been going on since 1506 one of the oldest military units continuously in operation in the world they still dress in traditional renaissance uniforms and are actually trained in combat and small arms it's not just for show. When it comes to their best friends, yeah, though, most Swiss cool. will tell you, oh, we're neutral. We can't mm. say we have a best friend. They took friend. humanism but way too far, But after you get far, them a little bro. tipsy and ask them one more time, they might make a Freudian slip and say, little Liechtenstein. Switzerland mm. and little Liechtenstein go hand in hand. They are irrefutably inseparable. Liechtenstein is basically this Switzerland's adorable so little baby on. sibling it's about 200 years younger. They not only so, share currencies so and speak almost the exact industry. same German dialect, they have a customs union, open borders, and the same 
same stance on armed neutrality, but Switzerland also agrees to protect them if anything happens, represent them in any international yeah. treaty negotiations or abroad if they are unable to, and even when Switzerland makes mistakes and does things like accidentally firing an artillery shell at a ski resort in 1968, or accidentally invades them because the soldiers couldn't read maps, Liechtenstein is just happy to Can see them and maps. offers them drinks upon arrival. All right, and in conclusion, Herman, context take it away, you're the Swiss guy. I'm out. Yeah. Switzerland speech, is a beautiful speech, country speech. where it's really nice to live and enjoy a nice and peaceful life or have a nice vacation if you bring the necessary cash. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Herman. For being this video. It was so it's fun filming with you. I can't believe I flew out here to just see you. Stay tuned. Especially going to Europe. Syria is coming up next. Syria. Could be interesting. So, yes, guys, that is it for the geography now of switzerland guys thank you guys so much for watching so excited for syria uh thank you switzerland i hope to see you in the napoleonic stuff uh because that's all i can remember i don't think it's going to be in absolutism whatever the however you pronounce that so anyways guys uh finally no more ap euro i'm gonna head out now this has been your boy jason Signing off. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.